Um, but I guess I was ready to compete since I was like little. I, I've always, it's going to sound very snotty, but I'm not trying to be. Um, I, okay. I've always loved the camera. Like I have, we have videos of me at home when I was little. Um, and I, mom, mom, is the camera on me? Or there's a video I have of me where I'm about, I just started gymnastics, so I'm like five, four, five maybe, and I'm holding a ball and I go, and in rush. And onto the stage, walks out, Rita Gershkenes, and then I salute and I walk out, and I'm, I'm just at home. You know, so I was ready to compete before I even was competing. <laughs> championship in 2019 i know 2020 was off uh and many you mostly know, most 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 of the athletes have uh, uh an off year on um, many occasions i don't do you compete on 2019 and 2020 excuse I, me i did compete i was one of the only actually or there was a couple there was like two maybe a little bit more people who managed to uh compete so so what happened was we we competed like a, um, we have our own competition here in the U.S. called Challenge, uh, mm -hmm. competed at Challenge. And then we I got assigned to international competitions. So I flew out end of February, beginning of March, and I competed in the Brno Grand Prix in the okay. Czech Republic. And I managed to snag third place. And <laughs> then we flew to Lisbon and we were supposed to compete in a tournament in Portugal. And we were walking around Portugal when our team manager suddenly says, Okay, guys, well, the, the competition's canceled. Uh, we have to fly home. Um, borders are closing. And so we just went to the hotel, packed up, flew out the next day in the morning, and then everything shut down, and we've been home. We were home for a few months. For a few months after that. Mm -hmm. It's been a crazy uh, scenario with that, but uh, I'm glad that you're back in track because I saw a 2021 competition, and uh, you competed too as well. Like, but let, let's go over Let's go over It'll be on your on your history because you have an unbelievable history. You competed in the, in the Pan American in, in 2019. You won in what, uh, the gold medal in the Pan American, correct? Yes, at like, the Pan American Games. They were in Lima, Peru. In Lima, and, uh, Peru, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it was a very exciting time. I managed to get uh, four gold and one bronze. Yes. Um, and then was part of the AAU Sports Awards and the... Um, you were American named Sports female Sports. athlete of, of the competition right there. Yes, it was it was unexpectedly exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that says something. And then 2017, you competed in, in um, Daytona Beach as well. And you carried yes, home were... with six gold medals on that time. Is that correct? Because that's what I read. It says... Oh, yes, there was a team event. Medals. Two yes. events, yes, yes, six gold medals right there. And then you keep going because you're going all over the place. And then you went to Bulgaria in 2018, and then you went to Lima, and then you went, I mean, and then the World Cup in 2021 was, uh, in, where was it, Sofia? I, I, I did the World Cup series. So I went to all four World Cups that were mm -hmm. available. Um, I went to Bulgaria and then to uh, Uzbekistan. Then I went to, hang on. Uh, Azerbaijan and to uh, Italy. In Italy. So, so let me ask you something. How many times, or, or how many times, yeah, a year you fly? Because it seems like you're all over the place. I've been flying around since I was 14, I think, since to different countries. Yeah, because my very first international competition was the Moscow. Um, well, the, I was a junior, so I was younger um, mm -hmm. in category terms. Um, Correct. And, I was either 14 or 15, and it was my first international competition. Um, so it was the Moscow Grand Prix, it was called. Um, but and, for juniors, it was a tournament. So, so, so you, I mean, how you manage? Because, I mean, let, let, me, let me continue with something extremely important. Uh, you are a, on the Dean Lees in Colombia because your GPA is above 4.0. So how you manage traveling and education so well? And then you're doing extremely well in sports because look, you're representing the U.S. <laughs> in the Olympics and you do it like you are doing in school as well. <laughs> so you are a role model for many kids. I, I hope 
all the girls, the little girls are watching this video or listening to this podcast, get to know you really well because I mean, this is amazing what you're doing right here. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I told you at the beginning before we start recording, but I'm a huge fan already. So tell me how you manage both. Um, I don't know. I've always liked learning and I love reading. I've always been a bookworm. So studying for me is actually really good because I like having my time filled mm -hmm. um, with things. And so I was sort of used to, so one of the good things about this year for me was that um, school was all online. So to me, it was like a blessing in disguise in a way okay. um, because I got to do, I got to travel and compete while still attending my classes. And I was sort of used to that because when I was in high school, I did um, in-person okay. classes mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. at a local high school called Carl Sandburg High School. And then I also took classes with Stanford Online High School, which um, was sort of the same as now, except they use Adobe instead of Zoom. And I would have to log in and attend classes, in quotes, in person. Okay. Um, and they have a logo now that says we did online school before it was cool. So I was sort of <laughs> <people> like <laughs> travel, <laughs> travel and do online school and log on and do classes and manage the workload that way. Um, so it wasn't entirely a brand new experience. A brand new experience. That that's big. Well, because I mean, if you're traveling since you're junior on the competition, uh, I can't imagine, you know, so you have you used to. But I think an important component to that, too, is communication. So before the school year starts, as soon as I meet my teachers or in this case online, I would either email them or tell them in person, hey, this is what I do. I travel a lot. I don't always know my schedule, but I will let you know as soon as I know anything. And would you be willing to work with me? What are your policies for extensions and like your leeways and options that you can give to me? So I think working with the professors and teachers is also super important, having that open communication going. Beautiful, beautiful. I imagine they will say that's okay. They're not, they're not gonna, they're not gonna put hard, hard things on you right there, right? They were very nice, yeah. <laughs> They have to. They have to be very nice. That's that's amazing. Now, Evita, tell me how everything started. Like, like uh, on on because I mean, the move that you do, the coordinations, the uh, the ball. I mean, it, it's just beautiful. Tell me how everything started. Who who introduced you to the sports? So I was four years old, and they had rhythmic gymnastics on the TV. Um, we just had it like at home on, um, and so I I saw a girl with a ribbon. Her name is Alina Kabaila. She's a Russian uh, gymnast. And uh, I told my mom, hey, I, I want to do this. And so I got laughed at. Um, she was like, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And so I apparently kept asking and she was like, fine, fine, we'll take you. So they took me to an artistic gymnastics gym, which is the gymnastics. It's like the most popular here, um, like the kind that Simone Biles does. And she said that I took one look, remember I'm four. I took one look at the gym and said, uh, uh this is the wrong gymnastics and I didn't do anything I refused to do anything and so then she was like fine so she took me to my rhythmic gymnastics gym which is about an hour hour and a half away from my house and I've been going there uh, ever since wow so, wow since so an hour and a half you commit an hour and a half to go to yes wow <laughs> on, I mean on good days it's an hour uh, but there's lots of construction right now. So, well, so all, that, all over the place is construction. Trust mm -hmm. me. <laughs> I'm in it Phoenix. <laughs> it's all over the place here in Phoenix, too. Uh, uh, construction's all over the place. So, so that's how, because I saw that you have a, a couple of two uh, instructors and you have to have the rhythm of dancing and, and I mean, coordinations. Yes, I did. Uh, I did ballroom dancing growing mm -hmm. up. I love ballroom dancing. I haven't done it in years now, but when I was little, I did it. And I think it helped propel some of my like sensations with the music. And then um, I also did several um, throughout my gymnastics career. I've, I've, I've attended several uh, professional ballet schools and done ballet because ballet is a very important foundation for rhythmic gymnastics. Mm -hmm. And so now I um, even coach uh, little girls sometimes for uh, belly technique. Oh, excellent. And, and, and so, so when was the moment that you say, okay, this is it. Uh, I'm ready to compete. Like, like you start competing when you were 14. 
somebody? Oh, well, that's, uh, that's, I made national team and then I was allowed to compete internationally. So that was my first international competition. And that's not really like I can choose to go international. Uh -huh. Um, but I guess I was ready to compete since I was like little, I I've always, it's going to sound very snotty, but I'm not trying to be, um, <laughs> I, okay. I've always loved the camera. Like I have, we have videos of me at home when I was little. Um, and I, mom, mom, is the camera on me? Or there's a video I have of me where I'm about, I just started gymnastics. So I'm like five, four or five, maybe. And I'm holding a ball and I go, and in Russian, and onto the stage walks out Vita Grishkenes. And then I salute and I walk out and I'm, I'm just at home, you know? So I was ready to compete before I even was competing. Ready to go. <laughs> That's <laughs> beautiful. Uh, so did you speak Russian as well? I do speak Russian, yes. How many languages? And you speak two only or you speak more than that? I speak, well, I speak English, Russian. Um, I understand Lithuanian fluently, but I can't speak it very well. Mm -hmm. And then I am, in air quotes, learning Spanish. So I, I did Spanish <laughs> in high school. I forgot more than I would like to admit. And then right now I'm trying to hey. remember it a little bit more again because uh, it's useful. It's, it's, it's helpful. So if you get to practice at any time. I'm here to practice with you. Oh, gracias. Entiendo más que puedo hablar. Muy bien. I love that. I love that. You see that? That's, yes. that's a role model right there. Awesome. Aww. Now, um, 2019 was crucial for you. How do you feel uh, when you were named, you know, athlete to represent in the United States, uh, the red, white, and blue? flag like you put this more I guess I felt I felt relieved um because they announced at nationals who was the official team and it would be three people Laura Zhang um me and Camilla Feely and uh because worlds are weird and it's the best way I can describe it I feel like it was it's different every time like one time we competed for like one event every day and then all four and then sometimes they'll do two and two and then all four and it, it's just it, it it's different and mm -hmm. so um they'll have also like a team event where you need a total of a certain amount of routines I forgot how much that is sorry probably 10 um so I would do four Laura would do four and then Camilla would do two uh something like that and so, okay so hey, here is um, it <laughs> Yes. And so I, I got to do all four routines, which was a big honor. And um, like, no, come on. There you are. <laughs> the camera. We have yes. a cat. We have a cat introduced. We do have a cat. <laughs> now let's hope he doesn't start scratching my door. But yes. Um, so <laughs> it was it was exciting. And then um, I guess I, as usual for competitions, I get really focused. Um, so the same as in 2018, as with these um upcoming competitions and as nationals that just happened where I got like officially assigned the and named for Tokyo mm -hmm. um I get very focused you got very focused and and then now uh it, it, how many how many person can go in the uh, 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 uh on your team like girls so, uh representing the United States yes so we uh, what happens is you have to qualify spots for the country. Okay. So the spots available are two spots for individual gymnasts because we have individuals and we have group and, the team. and then one spot for group and group is five girls competing on the carpet at the same time, all throwing to each other. And they have a little bit of a different rule set. So I can't speak too much about that. Okay. And, um, Laura and I in 2019 qualified for two spots. So we took two of the spots that were available Okay. And group had their own pathway that I'm not going to get into, but they officially qualified for a spot this year because of some ranking things. But anyway, right. okay. um, and so then we got spots for USA. It's not attached to our name. So right now at nationals, that's where we competed and our names were attached to the spots. So that's, two people okay. from individuals are going which is me and uh, Laura, and, Laura. Uh, and, and we have our uh, senior group who also qualified for a spot. So they will be going. So a total of seven people are going. And then there's also the reserves for just in case. So I don't know how 
their process works but somebody get her so something uh yeah it's they just can, they can. and are you going to uh compete in the on the group no you're just gonna compete individual no i, I compete individual mm -hmm. okay okay and how you feel like I, do you think i mean this is kind of like a silly question but who is the, the the biggest competition right there for you like you probably will see okay have somebody is I, i keep the eye on that girl well i try to keep my eyes on myself Beautiful. um as maybe <laughs> cliche as that sounds because really once you start focusing on other people you lose sight of yourself and you lose sight of what you're supposed to be doing and then everything just starts going down the spiral that you do not need to go down so i really try to look at myself and focus on myself in that moment and you know score checking what other people are doing or how they're doing isn't useful in the moments of competition But if we're talking about countries, mm -hmm. um, Russia and Israel are very strong, powerful right. countries just from results and Bulgaria and like the Slavic countries are very strong um, athletes. Excellent. Well, that, that's, that's an extraordinary answer. Let me tell you. I love Thank it. You. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, okay, forget about everybody else. I'm focused on myself. <laughs> I, like, I like that. I like that. That's, that's a mindset. That's a very good mindset, you know, in order for you to compete and and be focused on what you do. Like you said before, I mean, like I'm focusing when as soon as you jump into the carpet, you know, okay, this is it, this mm -hmm. is the job that I have to do. And how how you manage, I mean, how many hours you practice? Is it is a daily routine? Is it is it how, how that works? So we, I train between three and six hours per day. Um, it depends on the day. And my coach is very good about quality over quantity. So she would rather have, you know, one three hour practice than two, I don't know, four or five hour practices, because it's better to have a, a plan in place, say, do two times first part, two times second part, and then one routine. And then that's your plan, right? And you want to execute the plan rather than doing uh, mindless repetition. So yeah. it's very focused on and, and built, my schedule, I guess, is built around that. But right now it's sort of doing um, double practices. So I'll have like two, three hours in the morning, two, three hours in the evening um, with a break in between. I'll usually sit at like a Panera or Starbucks that's by the gym um, for my break. because I, I don't have, I can't travel home. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so you're still going to the same, you're practicing right now in the same gym since you were four yes. years old. So, <laughs> so it, it, it used to be called something else. And then some of the coaches split off. I followed one coach, but it's still technically the same coach in the same gym. So yes. It's technically the same. Okay. Okay. So you <laughs> just crashing the door. <laughs> oh yeah. He, he wants to get out. Um, I might have to, I might have to excuse myself in a little bit, but for now he's quiet enough. It's quite not. Now you let me know if you want to just, just <laughs> open the door. Let me know. It's fine. We stop. We can okay. edit. remember that we can cut everything. So don't you worry. Okay. <laughs> you know, so so we you. edit it and we take that part away. Um, now, I want you to tell, take me about, uh, you know, uh, uh, from high school to the university, because it's important for the kids to get to know this. Uh, yes. How you committed to, to, I mean, of course, you rank, you have, you know, uh, you're competing internationally. I imagine the universities already are looking at you. Um, how you decide to go to Columbus? I mean, do they offer you a scholarship? Uh, do they, uh, how that works? Right so there? rhythmic gymnastics isn't a college sport that's available. So although colleges have gymnastics, they don't have rhythmic gymnastics. So mm -hmm. I didn't have any, I don't think significant advantages for, you know, getting a, an athlete scholarship um, mm -hmm. or something like that. In athletics. Uh, I decided to take a gap year for 2020 because the plan was pre-pandemic to do, to, to focus on Tokyo and then compete in Tokyo and then start school. Mm -hmm. um, what happened was that I um, ended up with having nothing for a few months, <laughs> no school, <laughs> no gym, um, <laughs> And it was very weird because as athletes and students know, you have to manage your time and, mm. you know, you, you plan things all the time. All of a sudden when you have nothing, it's like time. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so I got back into reading and like, I read a lot and um, I tried to do some like online self-study classes. They did not work out. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Anyway, 
so that happened and then um yeah and so then end of uh well this was before fall semester so I guess it was more like summer time um when college decisions were coming out or maybe it was yeah um I I got my acceptance letter to Columbia and I got I was thrilled because I really wanted to go to Columbia. That was my dream school. And it's interesting because when I was applying, I didn't exactly have a dream school. I was just sort of applying to a bunch of places that I thought were a good fit. And Mm -hmm. I researched, um, but it wasn't anything, I guess, that that drew my attention. And then uh, the way some Ivies do it is that, and other colleges is that they they have like an interview portion Mm -hmm. if they like select you for an interview and then they decide from there if they would like to accept you or not. And so I had an interview with a a girl from um, Columbia and after talking to her, I was like, that's it, I'm going. (laughs) Like, I don't care if they take me, I'm going. (laughs) And so I- Same with the gene, when you, so you very focused on that. When you went yes, to the gym, no, no, this so is not I, the gym. Hold on. <laughs> yes, same story, basically. I didn't even realize that. But um, I, I got into Columbia and I was like, yeah, that's I'm going, I'm going. And so they announced that they're going to be doing um, everything virtual because of COVID. And I was like, hey, mm-hmm. that works perfectly. So then I started, I decided to start my freshman semester. And I ended um, my freshman year in Uzbekistan, actually, uh, while I was competing. <laughs> so, oh, really? Uh, um, um, so in the so that's crazy because so immediately you got accepted um you start uh, traveling immediately as well I mean like no 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 so I got accepted I did the fall semester at home okay um that was my first semester yeah and then I usually mm -hmm. travel more in the spring Mm mm-hmm so I, I made my schedule a little bit more heavy in the fall and a little bit lighter in the spring because I knew I'd be traveling most likely. Mm-hmm. And um, that worked out well. And so then I finished uh, my uh, second semester of freshman yes. year abroad. Yeah. And, and, and how you feel? And the, I've, the I've fun fact. How's that? Where? No, tell me. Tell me what are you saying? Oh, I was gonna say, fun fact: I've never been to New York City. You never <laughs> for campus ever. So, so that will be a fun experience. <laughs> and she's like thinking, like, wait a minute, I haven't been to New York City yet. <laughs> you kidding me? So you go? Yep, oh, I've been wow. to Lake Placid, New mm-hmm. York, but mm-hmm. never to New York, New York. Um, so that that will be an interesting experience. That that's an interesting scenario right there. Well, you have to go when you graduate, at least. You know, you have to be there. <laughs> you know, sometime. So I will. Mm-hmm. So so on on your schedule, do you have a vacation? Like like do you have like you say, okay, I'm gonna take this month off. I need to relax. I need to concentrate. I need to go back to myself a little bit. Just disconnect. Do you do that or not? Well, a month is a lot. So I wouldn't say a month. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, my, my coach, again, is very good about recovery time because recovery time is very important. So even if we don't have like a full week off, we, we might have like three, four days off. So a- after okay. we compete, we always have a day off okay. um, or a travel day will be a travel day plus a day off, uh, depending on, of course, competition schedule. But she's very good about making sure that we recover because part of being an athlete and even just student in life, like you need time to recover. Recovery is part of life and it's very important to introduce it in. So um, yeah, I I guess uh, we were, we were training in Russia in between competitions because there's no point of coming back to the U S and then traveling again. So we, we stay in like the Russian training center sometimes to train in between competitions. But during the world cup series, we were staying in Russia and I guess my coach wanted to motivate me, so she she like patted me on the back. She's like, Vita, and this isn't Russian, but um, Vita, August 9th. After August 9th, you can rest. But for now, we need to focus. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I'll probably be getting some be time. An accent right there. You think it'll be an accent right there? <laughs> oh, she has she has an amazing accent. And it's it's very unique to her, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I- <laughs> that I love it. I love it. That came out very good right there. So, so technically, you, so so you have how many competition a year? Because I mean, if you don't take the, the you know the vacation like you know, one week or so, 
But how many how many competitions uh, you schedule in a year? Maybe. And who schedule that? Do the do the US team schedule that, or you do it yourself? So I, I don't do any of that. Um, the What happens is there's a competition in the beginning of the year called Challenge. And so everyone on national team and gets to participate in Challenge and sort of like a national re-ranking mm-hmm. thing. And then there's a committee, which is the rhythmic side of USA Gymnastics and our program director, et cetera, who will sit down and be like, okay, I think this person should go to this competition because of this. And, um, you know, judging past experiences, future potential experiences, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, what they do is they decide your schedule for the rest of the year. So people are always like, oh, Vita, what's your schedule look like? I don't know know. because it changes all the time, especially with COVID. Now we were supposed to leave to Moscow today to compete, compete. but because of COVID things changed yesterday. And now we're going to New York to train before we go to Israel. So it's, it's really up in the air, especially now with COVID. Um, But I have have an important question because I was reading uh, um, and watching news about, there is some people still hesitating about, you know, and I, I have to ask you this because I think it's important for you and for the audience to get to know a little bit more what your opinion is about it. Are you concerned about, you know, what could happen or, or because no matter what, the, you know, the, the committed, you know, the Olympics committee, they, they wanted to go uh, still do the, the Olympics in 2020 when the pandemic was, you know, uh, on a really, you know, bad scenario because they don't have vaccines and nothing like that and they're still pushing it and there's but there's still people hesitating and complaining about it uh, i know there are many people are not able to go uh it's only for locals um i know that probably your parents are not going to be able to go um only your trainer correct is is the only one yes uh, uh, medical staff like medical. basically staff staff, the staff exactly so so um some people have taken the, uh, you know, the vaccine. Some people have not. What do you feel about that? How, or how you feel about it? Um, I think everyone has the right to their own opinion. So mm-hmm. I know, mm-hmm. you know, P- Japanese citizens are sort of divided. And I think there is that with every Olympics. Like during Rio, I didn't go. But I know that there was some debate going on between like people in Rio were like, well, you know, there's so much funding being put into the infrastructure, you know, into building this stuff when we need money too. And it, 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 it's always, I think, with every Olympics, there's, there's that sort of mm-hmm. divide and there's more factors to it than just the Olympics. But I'm very glad that they're still happening. Um, it's a big relief. I was really worried that they would be canceled back in 2020, um, but I was just glad that they were postponed. I personally feel very comfortable and safe and to, like the organizations are really all working very closely and very well together. And there are so many rules and so many protocols we have to follow. There will be contact tracing, constant COVID testing, um, you know, uh, and a bunch of other uh, rules and, and there's seminars we have to attend and there's a lot going on behind the scenes, I think, to make sure that this is a very safe event, as safe as it can be. Excellent. Yeah, I was talking to one of your uh, um, uh, US team, uh, if you uh, um, uh, was talking to her uh, in one of the episodes, the preview episodes to you, which is going to be air in the next week or so, as well as yours. Um, and she was mentioned that you guys are going to be tracked by the phone as well uh, to make sure that everybody is safe and not too many, you know, uh, uh, connections, I guess. It's unfortunately because, you know, I imagine, uh, are you going to be able to go to this, the open ceremony or, or not? Because she's not. No, but we are at the very end of it's perfect. We are at the very, so I think Tokyo did, uh, the Olympics did this thing where you can only stay for 10 days. So okay. preparation and then your competition days, the competition. Um, plus travel. So I, we got really lucky in that we compete on the 6th, 7th and 8th of August okay. and the closing ceremonies are on the 8th. <laughs> so we get to attend closing ceremonies. <laughs> There you are. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So did you compete three days on on on, on those days or, or 
So uh, the way they structured it for the Olympics is that uh, individuals compete on the 6th okay. and the 7th. On the 7th and the 8th, um, the groups compete. Okay. Okay, 7 and 8. But you have to stay until until the group finish it as well. Yes. Because and then you guys hide kind of like in the same area? Bubble. Same. same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we share we share a gym too. So we were all, we all train together. You all train together. Okay. Also, you train together uh, uh, when you were the team. All of us. All together. Oh, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. So it's nice because you are individual. You go separately or none, none of this. I mean, no, we, we train in the same gym. So like, I mean, we have our own routines and schedules, but we all train in the same facility and Correct. The same North Correct. Shore with my gymnastics. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Excellent. Excellent. So how anxious are you? How anxious are you to get to Tokyo? I wouldn't say I'm anxious. I'm definitely excited. I, I again, I keep, I keep telling this to everyone, but it's been coming in waves because like okay. you'll have like a normal day and then you'll be like, Tokyo. <laughs> and then you'll it'll, like go back to like being a normal day. And then you're trying to fall asleep at night and you're like, Tokyo. And then you're like, no, 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 I need to fall asleep. <laughs> and so, yeah, I have, I have, and I probably maybe should, I'm going to be calling myself out here, but like I'm in the middle of like packing right now for, you know, the trip. And so I have like everything all over my floor right now and like notebooks with like lists and I'm trying to think of what I need and last minute things. And so it's, yeah, it's, it's a process. <laughs> it's a process. It's a process. But I, I imagine you kind of, kind of used to when I say, because okay, you travel so much, you've been in so all the place. Uh, what is mm -hmm. the, 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 the most fine competition or, or you ever been like you can tell me oh I had a blast right here okay it's really hard to pick a favorite competition but I I love going to Pesaro Italy because it's one of the it's one of my favorite places to visit like everyone is so nice there and I love being by the sea and I just the experience itself is always such a joy and I really love Italy also gelato very good um <laughs> <laughs> And then um, I've even made, I've, I've got, went there already five, six times to compete. Um, and I love Italy all around. And then uh, we actually competed once in Japan. It was Aeon Cup um, was the competition. And it was super fun because it was my first time going to Japan. So Tokyo will be my second time going to Japan. And it was very a different experience. And I really enjoyed the competition. Everything was pink. Lots of Hello Kitties. Um, and we had a really fun time at the end and they took us to Disneyland Tokyo after as like a treat for us, which was uh -huh. unexpectedly nice. Uh -huh. And then I love Israel because Israel is a very I don't know, special place to me, um, at least religiously speaking. And um, well, so well, how, they took how, us. How, how different is between the three countries? Because I mean, Italy is something else. I mean, you're talking about uh, good food. Uh, history all buildings oh, so um cool. is 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 i uh, had opportunity to live in europe so i, I i've been in some places as well they are right there it's beautiful you know uh the culture is is completely different as well um uh, the same a uh, so so i never been in japan but but how how and in israel i mean you're talking about three completely different cultures right there. oh wait till i get into slovenia Slovenia oh, really? is beautiful. It's one of those countries you don't think about. But then when I was there, I want to go back with my family and like I want to take even like my best friend there because it's so beautiful. It's a very small country, but you have this historical city in the middle. And then one hour drive that way is to the sea, apparently. Uh -huh. And the other way from the center like one hour drive is beautiful nature. There's like mountains and lakes and just, it was, it was so refreshing to see. It was, you know, the, the, the best water on the planet is on that country. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah it's the I could see that. pure water uh, on, on the planet. Excuse me. It's, on it's true. Wait, I put, I put, I have a picture. I put my hand in the water and you couldn't tell there was my hand halfway in the water. It was that clear. It's so exactly. See, see, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I saw the uh, uh, documentary and then talking about that. I'm like, really? Such yeah. a small country has the best water on the planet. Totally buy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you totally buy. 
<laughs> awesome. I like that. <laughs> well, I need to go to those places because I haven't been in Slovenia either. So I had to, I had to make sure I travel to that. So now mindset preparation, do you do any routine? Like, like, because you say, you know, religion is important for you. I see that you're extremely focused. Okay. Uh, by the time you're going to be, I can see it on you talking to you right now. Uh, so I, what do you do before competition? Um, so I guess I like to plan things out either the day of in the morning, if I compete later at night or the night before. So I'll, I'll sit down, I'll take my uh, notebook and I'll, I'll write out. Um, okay. If I compete at, and basically reverse engineering, if I compete at 12 o'clock, that means I need to be in the gym at whatever Mm -hmm. time I need to be at the gym. Um, here's what the bus schedule is. Pick out the bus or if I'm driving myself like at nationals, then when do I have to leave? And then I'll think about, okay, now working more backwards. When do I start my hair and makeup? How long do I want to have in between like finishing that? And so I'll sort of plan out little timestamps um, in, in terms of like preparation. And then I'll, I'll, I'll pack my bag usually on the day I compete unless I compete super early in the morning. So like nationals this year was interesting because we competed um, on Saturday from six to 9 PM. And then I was in the gym at seven 30 AM the next day. Oh, wow. And then we competed two events in the morning until 11. And then we had a three hour break. And then we had the second part of competition where we competed two more events and then people who qualified for the Olympics were taken to the artistic Olympic trial side where there was like a big like celebration part but then we we ended up leaving the gym at 10 30 p.m oh, the long day that's a long yes. day <laughs> so you know planning having you know snacks food or like just something I can like buy eventually or uh, making sure I have all of my um you know leotards equipment uh ready is, is something that's important. And then of, of course I pray and I reflect. Um, and did you go over, you move, did you go over the music? Did you, did you like, okay, I have sometimes. to make sure this. Yeah. I mean, like when you troll the ball or you troll that, uh, the, I mean, the preparation, you know, for, for you to land it. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I think, that, you know, the coordination that you guys have you're moving all your muscles, you know, f doing some flips and, and, and then throwing something to the air and then land. I mean, it's just, it's just. See, I call rhythmic gymnasts clumsily agile because in, when we do what we do, we're pretty, we're pretty agile. We're pretty good at coordination. Uh -huh. And then we walk off and we trip and fall on like every two <laughs> seconds. I walk into the wall like every day. I'm not kidding. I will like walk into the door and the wall like all the time or like trip over my uh, shoes. That happens every day. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> answering the question. Um, yeah. Well, visualization I think is important for many, like across many disciplines and many sports. So it's not, I think a uniquely rhythmic thing, but you'll do that. Like before you come out, it's part of your like, or at least for me, it's part of my like preparation, you know, do Mm -hmm. tosses this amount of times then do what feels right then do you know parts maybe a routine then sit down visualize and then go out something like that it, it fluctuates i think but yeah excellent excellent and now talk to me about your parents we haven't mentioned them but do they go with you most of the time how i mean i imagine how proud they are i mean i can't i can't i can't think about that i mean uh they must be walking in the air right now but how how you manage your time with your family? So Tokyo would have been their very first international competition. They would have seen me compete at oh, in person. You kidding? Yeah. Um, so they have not traveled internationally with me. Um, and again, usually our federation covers like the tickets and the flights and stuff. So they they mm -hmm. organize all of that. So at least that's covered. But financially, that those trips would cost a lot. So they don't travel with me. Um, and then nationals, they haven't gone for a while. Like you still have to pay for tickets and stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, that happened. I think my mom went with me in 2019, but she doesn't really watch me when I compete. She, she watches after. Oh, really? <laughs> so, yeah, but they watched me, um, they watch live streams are a little different cause they lag. So they'll like watch it live. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, yeah, so, so they watched these 20 21 nationals uh live nice. and it was it was nice of them because i always write to them and um 
Do you are you do you live close to them? Or, uh, do you, I live you, with them. Oh, you live with them. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, I just travel a lot. <laughs> so ever since I was 14, I'll be gone for like a month at a time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it, it's we we talk a lot on the phone and when I'm traveling and um, I, I am very close with my family and I think family is very important. So, yeah. And also my parents were both athletes and pretty good ones, if I can say. Oh, really? Um, What sports do they yes. do? Yes. So, um, wait, I'm, I, is it bad that I need to Google this? I just don't want to get it wrong because I always get it wrong. And I say bodybuilding, but it was not bodybuilding. Hang on. <laughs> Okay. So my dad was, they're both uh, fitness coaches for a while. And then my dad is a twice world fitness champion and okay. vice Mr. Fitness universe. And then my mom did fitness aerobics and they also did a couple's world fitness. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, so, so the sport is in the blood. In my blood. Yeah. And it's funny because they weren't planning to make me do any sports. Um, cause I asked like, were you planning to make me do any sports? And they were like, no, you just wanted to. So it, it really is in the blood. <laughs> well, I'm, a, I'm making my son doing it. <laughs> I got two sons. So, so I got one 10 and good. one three. So I, they have to, they have to do it. <laughs> so you were, you were like, right away. I like <laughs> that you saw that Russian, I, I forgot her name, uh, and the Olympus. Alina. I want to do that. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that because, well, my sons keep saying he's going to be a professional soccer player, which I don't know. I hope that happens, you know, but, uh, but we keep, we keep going, you know, taking him to the gym. He's doing a lot of training, but anyways, That's great. this is beautiful. The, 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 you know, you have that, you know, in, in the blood already. Um, so, so, you, and you have a brother, if you're not mistaken, he's doing yes. some, some sports over there too, right? He does, he does archery. Yeah. Archery. Uh, yeah. Not, not competitively yet, but hopefully. How, how old is your brother? He's 16. Oh, 16. There you are. There you are. No, that's yes. A, that's he's, a he's so sweet. I, I, he's amazing. He is like my number one. Dan. <laughs> really he is he's he's incredible uh, it's you know most people are like oh my brother but no my brother is how and, and how you manage because you know like it's it's it's, it's fascinating right now because what about friends i mean is, is it, do you have friends is within the, the team that you travel i mean who is your closest friend do they have you have friends at home how, how that works i'd say i'm friendly with a lot of people um but in terms of friends i think having few but close people is much better than having a lot of, you know, friends. So while I'm, I'm friendly and like acquainted with a lot of people, and again, I'm, I'm a very chatty person. Mm -hmm. I'd say um, I have one best friend um, who I can really trust and uh, keep close. And uh, her name is Kate. She's an author, by the way. Um, <laughs> she is trying to publish a book right now and oh, really? she is amazing. And when she publishes that book, I will be sure to be telling absolutely every single person possible. Every single person. Well, let me I know. want to that. see her. We put it on social media. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to be her little <laughs> mascot. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, yeah, so she lives here and, um, Yeah, we're, we're really, really close friends, and she's super supportive. Awesome, awesome. And now, uh, uh, before we go, I know you, you're busy right now, and I appreciate one more time, you know, you taking this time. Uh, it's fascinating to me, like I said before. It's just, it's just fascinating to me talking to you guys because I'm a huge fan of sports in general. You know, no, no matter what sports I, you know, even though that I'm not too, Um, I don't have too much culture, I guess, on your sports or, you know, because I mean, being, being, being from Venezuela, I don't think, um, <laughs> you know, we play baseball right there, you know, sat all day, mm -hmm. you know, uh, growing up, uh, that's, that's the main reason why I got here to the United States because of baseball. Uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me, you know, everything that you guys do, because sometimes out of, you know, your world, you know, we think is, you know, it's, it's, it's different, but you guys have a lot of commitment. It's a lot of hours right there, a lot of time um, away from people that you love. Uh, a lot of times traveling, um, sleeping in the airplanes, uh, uh, you name it. I mean, <laughs> see, you look at your face right there. So, so I love that from you guys, because I mean, here in the future, I mean, I know, Probably your mom and your dad would not be able to go right now. We know, 
uh, but in the future, um, uh, you're going to keep going. Is that correct? I mean, like, like I would like to at yeah. least another cycle, mm -hmm. but and that depends of course on like, you know, health and things like that and just the way things are going. But I, I think it's, it's possible. Um, Do you have something on schedule already? Like, okay, after the Olympics, what's going to well, happen? We have our world championships because world championships are every year except for the Olympic year, but because of COVID, that got shifted. So now we have a world championship this year too. It's actually in Japan again. Um, which is okay. Exciting. And so that is definitely on the radar for what's next. because that's coming up in October. So that's oh, a very short amount of time. So, Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, so from there, so immediately you start preparing for the championship and, and, and so, so how long is the, when you do a championship, the training section, how long is that? Is that like two, three months ahead of time? How that work? Um, or it's really. just, it's just, just your training, I guess, like because, yeah, normal. Um, yeah. It, it, I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, excellent, excellent. And, um, and then from here to the next Olympics, I imagine you're gonna, you're still gonna keep, you know, uh, having that on, um, on mind, correct? I would hope so, yes. You hope so. <laughs> like you say, you know, dependent, you know, but thank you so very much. Well, you know what? I appreciate your time, uh, Evita. Uh, thank you for letting me uh, share this story, you know, with the public, share, you know, a little bit more about you, a little bit more about your enthusiasm and your smile. I mean, the energy that you have is just. Thank you. It's, it's very sweet. Energy. And I think sport is very special because it teaches us so many life lessons. And like you were saying, you put your kids into sport and really, and, and you did sport too. So like growing up, like you learn a lot from the sport, not just about the sport, but about like grit and work ethic and what it means to have responsibilities to not just yourself, but to other people, to a team and um, decision-making and making choices is also a super big part of sport because it's like, you know, do I hit the, when do I hit the ball? Like mm -hmm. if, if I missed the ball, I'm talking baseball here, not that I know much about it, but you know, if, if you missed the ball, like it's on you mm -hmm. and um, you made the choice to swing at that exact moment. So then you have to do a lot of self-reflection and analysis. And like, I have a story I like to tell, which is I was at a competition that had a club falling and I could have caught it like this into my hand, or I could have caught it with the other club. And just based on the way it was flying and I started debating which one to do and I missed it and you missed and it. I think that's a very good life lesson too mm -hmm. like sometimes you have to make a choice in the moment and, and commit to it and it might not be the right choice but you made a choice and sometimes being in that standstill doesn't always help so anyway point is sport is very important and so I guess <laughs> to, to everyone listening or watching like no you know really what? It, it, it's just amazing because you know it, I think you, it's beautiful what you're saying because I mean athletes are prepared to everything you know it's, it's a commitment that you're saying is uh, it, it, it takes one you know third of the seconds to make a decision Right. And it could go good, like you say, and it could go wrong. But no matter what, you know, uh, it's, you know, you prepare to win, to lose, to compete. And that's what's going to take you to the long run, you know, because there is going to get a moment, you know, hopefully not soon. Right. Long time away from, from now, a long time away from now. But it's going to take a moment. You're going to say, OK, I'm going to quit the sports and I'm going to focus on something else that is going to give you, you know, living, you know, uh, uh, like a regular yeah. professional, right? Uh, but right there, mentally, you might say, it's prepared to do that job. You know, it's, it's prepared to, to jump into that stage that you say, okay, this is it. Now I have to, you know, pass the page. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult. You know, sometimes it's difficult because you guys are like 24-7 active, you know, like working, working, working towards something that is such a beautiful uh you know i mean the olympics what else you can ask right i mean i i don't i mean i know the super bowl is extremely famous um you know nba finals uh the world series in baseball the world cup uh, but i think the world cup and in, in the olympics are right there you know uh, uh when you talk when we talk about international sports and when we talk about the high 
intensity of competition. So Olympics, you know, for you, Scott, you, you, I mean, I, I wish, you know, nothing but the best, you know, and, and I hope when you get back, you know, hope, no matter what the result is, you know, uh, we came back in touch and we can go over the experience, you know, on, on how you did and, and what you learn about it because it's a learning experience for you, right? It's something that you're going to take. Absolutely. It's something that you're going to absorb and you're going to say, okay, what well, could have done better or, or I can do done nothing else, you know, because I did a thousand percent of what I have to do, what I have to accomplish, which is the mindset, right? And, and you have it since five years old. So I, I think I think probably before that, but, <laughs> but I mean, like realistically, I mean, you know, you focus, and and you know, I I hope you you get back with the medal. I mean, I'll be honest with you, you know, I don't like you said, I don't care about anything anybody else, you know, I just focus on 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 that because I mean, I saw your videos one more time. I got to mention the videos because I I watch it. I mean, I show it to my wife and I said, look 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 at her. You know, oh. how beautiful, you know, how amazing. And the, I saw videos from 20, uh, 21, from 2020, for 2019. So I saw a, a few videos and I don't see any mistake. I mean, I, like I said, I don't know much. <laughs> I don't, definitely, I don't know. That, definitely there. <laughs> I don't know much about the sport, but, but it, to me, it's like perfection. You know, it's, it's like, wow, wow. She is, uh, I, and I love your name, Evita. I mean. Thank you. Actually, my, my, uh. My my dad wanted to name me Eva, and my mom wanted to name me v- Vitalia, and so then they combined um, it to be Evita. Evita. <laughs> you know, it's a famous name. It's, I mean, yes, I, I, I always hear that one. It's like, oh, have you seen the musical? No. It's, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, I mean, well, for Latin America, Evita. Evita is, de Argentina. <laughs> yeah, Argentina, I imagine. I mean, it's, oh, and, and I don't know, I think it's fascinating from you is, you, you, you know, the capacity for you to have speak uh, you know, the two language, you, you good at one, you listen to, to one extremely good and you learn Spanish, which is fascinating to me. You know, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I hope, like I said, you know, if you need any, any, any <laughs> translation, text me, <laughs> I'll be here. Good. <laughs> but thank, thank you, Evita, Evita. You, you, is that correct? I pronounce it like 